Hey everyone, and welcome back to Art a la carte. And in this episode, I'm going to address a request that I get quite frequently. Now, as many of you guys know, my top four requested topics have always been horses, cats, dragons, and dogs slash wolves. I get them all the time, and that's why you see a pretty good uh, selection of how to draw tutorial videos on those topics. I have been asked multiple times to do a how to draw wolf tutorial video that covers the topic of wolf with wings. Now, I didn't even know that was a thing until you guys started requesting it, and then I kind of looked it up, and sure enough, there is quite a lot of art done oh, with wolves with wings. So, who knew that the Pegasus had such a challenger in the... what is a wolf with wings called? A wolficus? Pegawolf? No, let me know in the comments what, if they have an actual name for wolf with wings. I have a ton of videos on drawing wolves and dogs, and so I'm not going to do an exact tutorial on drawing a wolf. And I actually have a video on drawing bird's wings, so I'm not going to go into super duper detail on how the construction and muscles and all that of the bird's wing go, um, because you can watch both those videos. I'll put links to those in the description box below so you can check out those videos. But I want to talk about combining the two together. When you understand how to take elements from different types of drawings and put them together, then you can do this with anything. You could make a you know, flying ferret or a flying turtle or a flying whale, whatever. You could put wings on anything. So obviously as I'm first drawing out this wolf, I just draw the wolf shape out. I want to get the base in there first. I want to make sure that it looks really well. And then I begin to sketch out how I want the wings. Now an art trick that I found that really helped improve my art was overlapping. Um, sometimes you're just tempted to draw the wings up so it's not covering any of the hard work that you did on the wolf, but then it kind of makes it look disjointed. So as you draw the wings in there, make sure to draw the lines so that they kind of come over the wolf and have the wing that's behind the wolf, you know, kind of poke in and you can see it between the legs, you know, as if it was really there. It's going to add a little bit more realism to your drawing if you can kind of see how things overlap. You're going to also want to think about the logistics of your wings. Um, Obviously, they're made up creatures, but you know, if you wanted your wolf to actually fly, you'd have to get the wing body ratio kind of correct. And even with this wolf, I would think that the wing ratio is a little bit off. I think the wings would have to be bigger to actually get this wolf off. But maybe the bone structure of the wolf is kind of like more of a bird structure where the bird's bones are hollow. Maybe the flying wolf's bones are hollow. So you want to kind of take that into thought. You know, possibly. You could have really cute little tiny itty bitty wings on your wolf. It's your drawing. You could do whatever you want with that. I don't care. What I did is I did look at reference photos of like eagle wings and kind of see how they, you know, folded and, and all that and kind of in my mind looking at the pictures of the wolves and the pictures of the eagles kind of merged those two together. So here we go. I have my finished little sketch right there in my little sketch drawing, but let's push ourselves to think outside of the box because um, Obviously, the first kind of type of uh, wing that I threw on this wolf was uh, kind of a bird or eagle-ish kind of wings. But again, as I said, this is, a, you know, an imaginary animal that we can just do with whatever we want. So let's look at some different types of wings that we can then put on our wolf drawing. Now, if you watched my how to draw a bird wing video, I went through all the structures and bones with that. But let's look really quickly at the bat's kind of bone structure. So his shoulder here coming down for his elbow and then coming up to what I would consider his hand because the spines that go down the bat wings almost look like the fingers. So here we're going to have kind of like a little bit of a thumb that points out. Um, this helps him grab onto things and then we're going to have his fingers. So we'll have one kind of coming down this way and then two down this way and then three down this way and maybe even a fourth kind of coming down here and again you could you know do a three or you could do two or you know just play around with it however you want you could go really super duper correct with the bat anatomy or just make it up as you go so I'm gonna put a little bit of a bend to each kind of like there's almost little joints in there knuckles it's gonna give it almost a creepier feel to this little wing bone structure there all right, once we have this bone structure down, now we do the webbing, and you're just going to stretch the membrane between the two spines. So down to this one here, 
and then stretch the membrane. And as it stretches, it's going to go taut, so it's going to have a little bowed action there. I'm going to bow up instead of just going straight across. Just bow it a little bit, and that kind of gives that illusion of kind of stretched. Okay, so there's the front part of the, the wing there. And then there's actually, as this bone, and a bit of an arm comes down here, there's a little bit of a membrane right across the top here. And then usually there's another little bone that comes down here. It almost connects. If you look at a real bat, it connects to his, like this is his body here. And then he has a little back leg right here and it almost connects to that. So you could kind of think about that with the wolf if you wanted it to connect to the front paw and then to the back paw. Or you could just kind of have it, you know, have an just connect to the body. You'd have to decide how you wanted to do that. This is also a really good idea if you want to learn how to draw dragons. I guess dragon wings are really fun like this too. <gasps> I'm doing a two for video. Draw bat wings, wolf bat wings, and dragon wings. Hmm, very interesting. Now I'm going to show you a really kind of fun technique um, to make it kind of a little, little worn and tearing. Is just take a little part in the wing and just put a little cut in there like that. I'm going to erase that center piece right there and it's just going to give it a little bit more like he's been in a battle and has a little bit of a war wound there. So there's a bat wing that we could put on our wolf. Let's try a different type of wing. Maybe you don't want such a scary type of wing. Maybe you'd want more of a fantasy wing that's a little bit more flighty and light and not as you know ominously scary. Let's try a butterfly wing. So for a butterfly wing we're going to make kind of a teardrop shape that kind of comes down so it's going to go arch up and then as it's coming down it's going to kind of block out just a little bit so it makes a size. So it's like a teardrop shape that kind of sagging at the bottom and then at the bottom part again another teardrop shape that kind of comes out from the wing and connects in just like so. This is a basic kind of butterfly wing design there. And again, you could then put in whatever kind of patterns you wanted in here. So there's a fun little, very basic, simple design for a butterfly wing if you wanted to give, you know, make a fairy wolf thing. I don't know. But let's try, let's try one that's a little bit more fancy. Taking this idea, we'll have this line here. We'll bring this line up here. And we'll have we'll have this line here, but instead of just keeping bringing it down, we're going to swirl this, swirl it a little bit, give it some ruffles, and then we're going to swirl this line out here. So it kind of gives more of a of a fantasy look. So if you don't want just like an absolute butterfly, and we could even give a middle part to that wing, you know, kind of come out and swirl that out too. You could just create all sorts of kind of roughly frilly wing designs. But this is the fun about having a sketchbook is before you actually draw, you know, your actual piece here, play around in your sketchbook and draw several different designs and you might come up with something you like even better. Well, hopefully this answers some of your guys' requests for how to draw a wolf with wings and hopefully it gave you some great ideas and kind of um, gave you some inspiration to go out and create your own wolf with wings drawings. If you do, I'd love to see them. Make sure to post them to my Facebook page and Instagram. You can send them to me on my email or you can even mail them to me. Love, 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 love to take a peek at those. So. If you're not a subscriber to this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future videos. I post four videos up each week and cover different topics that uh, you guys request in the comments. So if there's something that you would like to learn how to draw and you have not seen it on here, or maybe you've requested it in the past but I just haven't done it yet, um, keep requesting it. So leave those comments of things you'd like to see uh, for tutorial ideas in those comment section below. Well, thank you guys for drawing with me today. And until next time, God bless you guys, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.